In this final movie on the Rostam Electro Music Evolution Variable Character Filter, I'm going to talk about this Species section, which is basically a very controlled overdrive. When Dave Rostam designed this filter, he did what he could to clean up the inherent colorations in the old Moog transistor ladder design. He wanted to create, as a starting point, a very clean filter. You'll notice that, even though there's lots of other controls in this filter, there is no input level control. I've gone back to using the Sawtooth Wave from the Moog Mother 32, and even at pretty full level, there is no real distortion. A very clean filter. And I'll go ahead and crank up that sawtooth wave even higher. So as long as you're following Euro rack levels, you don't need to worry about accidentally overdriving the filter. However, sometimes purposely overdriving these devices can create interesting distortion. And in the case of a ladder filter, overdriving it causes distortion above the cutoff frequency. So what Dave Rossum did is he created the species control that simultaneously increases the level going into the filter to put it into overdrive and cause distortion, and at the same time cuts the output level so that the final volume level stays somewhat consistent. Normally, when you change the input level in a filter, you have to compensate for it somewhere downstream. You don't need to do that with the species control. I've gone back to using the Sawtooth Wave from the Mother 32 because it really shows harmonically and wave shape wise the different characters of the species control. I'm going to play a note. Go to a fair setting here. Reduce resonance so we can see what's going on. Remove the frequency modulation of the resonance so that we get a fairly clean Sawtooth like waveform on our spectra display. I'll raise the cutoff a little bit more. So we're just cutting off a little bit of the high frequencies and start increasing species. Watch what happens on both the spectra and the waveform. There's that typical slightly constricted sound that you hear out of an overdriven filter. And you'll see that we pull down the second harmonic in particular on the spectra display. What I've found as you drive species even further, you go into a new zone, which really suppresses the even harmonics in particular. It really changes the character of the sound and pushes it more towards a classic square wave. So here is overdriven, clean. Overdriven, square wave-ish, with the even harmonics suppressed. Again, this changes with different genus settings. There's the six pull setting. But it really changes with resonance amount, because as with most filters, a lot of input drive will actually cancel out resonance. I'm going to put this into oscillation, or very close to it. Increase the species control to get some distortion. Notice that we're not clipping the output. This is actually distortion happening inside the circuit. But as I push the species even higher, the resonant humps start to disappear. Then we go back to our pure overdriven sound with the even harmonics suppressed. Resonance present. Resonance not present at high species settings. So if you do want high resonance in your sound, don't push your species past, say, about halfway. Otherwise, you'll suppress it. And like with many things with the evolution filter, you've got control voltages for the species, including the ability to frequency modulate it. I'll put in another control voltage here, again from the triangle from our second oscillator. I'm increasing the FM depth to the species setting. That's a nice, filthy sound. So this is an extraordinarily flexible filter. When you first get it, you may think it's a bit too smooth or a bit too polite for your taste, but as you dive into it, you'll see it's actually very precise and very well behaved and allows you to get a lot of different filter characters out of it. As I mentioned before, it's my go-to filter when I need a low-pass Moog transistor ladder type sound out of my main system.